everybody, this is Nia Fala and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology forecast from the middle of October until the end of October 2022. Before we begin talking about the sky and how it affects all of us, all zodiac signs, I want to give thanks to a good friend, a good friend that has been here with me since my first video in 2012. It's the first video I do without her and through the years sometimes she was a bigger star than I was and my popularity was owed to her. This is the first video I'm doing without Georgia. Georgia passed away last Saturday morning in my arms. She was 19 years old. I was hugging her. I later on buried her. And the house is empty. I'm not used to not hearing her and seeing her and taking care of her. And I'm not used that she's not there to take care of me. Always. Always. So it's been a hard few days. Georgia died on her nodal return with stationary Mars conjunct the moon on her natal Mars and Venus and with Pluto on our Chiron for a while, same degree. So, um, thank you Georgia for spending this lifetime with me, for choosing me to spend this lifetime with you. Let's talk about the sky. The sky is sensitive and transformative. On the one hand, we're having a square between Mars, which is stationary, and Neptune, which can invoke a feeling that we aren't able to deal with the flood of this oceanic currents we need to swim in, that we are merely but drops in that ocean, and we are carried away on its currents and storms. Nevertheless, it is a very spiritual time. A time of understanding our place in this universe and what we can change and what we can't. Very much like the prayer of serenity. It is a time that if we don't do that, our frustration could lead us to a sense of victimization and to try and dull reality with substance abuse or emotional eating excessive shopping or excessive sexuality and these are traits we should uh, stay away from of course any other trait which is self-harming should be included as well nevertheless this is an amazing time to surrender to spirit to surrender to the cyclic motion of this world of nature of death and rebirth understanding that one cannot exist without the other in the temporal in time space and that we took upon ourselves to live through this time space to remind ourselves that we chose to came to come here and experience the density of temporality of this dimension of its cruelty and harshness because of the constant departures we have to keep up with and and uh, experience and it is also a great time to connect to creativity to art to expressing this immortal connection and to really take all of these energies thoughts and feelings and divert them into something that could inspire you and others further on Mercury, the planet of communication, is opposing the wounded healer Chiron on the 19th. This is the day that Venus conjuncts the Sun, reaches its star point, and um, we have also Venus squaring Pluto at that time, and the Sun squaring Pluto at that time. So a very transformative time, a time in which we change. We change the things we love, 
we change the, the, the way we do things and the way we create and the way we relate to things. And because Venus is there, our relationships with ourselves, with our self-value, with money and with others are apt to transformation and change as well. So Mercury opposition Chiron is all about, you know, endearing communication, sensitive communication, healing communication. But it's not always the case. This could be a time of harmful and, 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 and you know, painful communications as well. The things that have not been resolved come up too harshly. But listening to the stars, as you do, you can try and aim for the first and better appearance of Mercury opposition Chiron and not the latter. We are having the square between Saturn, which is starting to move forward, and Uranus still in the sky, which really, you know, makes us feel the pressure of the change in geopolitics, in economy, in the structures of society and leadership and politics that we're all going through. You know, we're going through an update. We understand that the old rules don't apply anymore, that they need to change, but the, the ship moves so slowly. Such a big ship to turn. You know, and it will take time. And we can all feel the stress on the hull of this great ship we're on. Um, if I go further on, on the 22nd, Mercury is going to try uh, Saturn exactly. All along this month and through it, we are having a grand air trine that we talked about already in previous videos between Saturn, which is starting to move forward, and now Mercury joins in as it is moving forward as well, the Sun and Venus, and on the other hand, that stationary Mars. And this grand air trine really helps us understand things better, see things better, see our own route through this new jungle we're in, you know, this new <coughs> um, Aquarian age that we're in, which moves so much faster than the last age. Changes are so radical comparing to the old, uh, you know, lumbering uh, age of Pisces that we came through. And it helps us find our path, understand what's true and what's not, and take the um, you know, responsible and strategic decision over decisions that could be, you know, led by feelings. It's an amazing time to understand our wants and cravings and needs and better understand what stands behind them, what they stem from and actually give legitimacy to what it stems from and try to update the way it manifests that need, that want, that craving in your life. I want to say a few words about us entering eclipse season. We enter the eclipse season two times a year. And in the eclipse season, we find that there's more dramatic changes, important changes, strategic changes in our lives. They might be hard. They might be pleasant. The way we react and their personal attribution to us can be seen when we examine our personal natal charts. We can already feel eclipse energy around us. And the first partial solar eclipse is going to occur in the new moon on the 25th and we're going to talk more about eclipse season and 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 uh, coming eclipse at the 9th of november if i'm not mistaken which is a powerful lunar eclipse in the next video this one we're going to talk about the new moon the partial uh, the partial solar eclipse on the 25th so let's talk in a few words about this new moon and Scorpio that we're heading into, which is a partial solar eclipse. It's the first of two eclipses, the second one on the 8th or 9th 
off November. Um, this one in Scorpio, that one in Taurus. Two very powerful eclipses. This one in the second degree of Scorpio, conjunct Venus, squaring Pluto. Really a new moon, an eclipse that demands innermost change. With the squares to Pluto, this is not an easy time. It's not a time for euphemisms. This is a hard time. This is a challenging time. This is a stressful time in which relationships can break up, in which relationships could go into dramatic turns that are beneficial for personal growth, for understanding better our relationships with ourselves, with our self-esteem and what comprises it, with our values towards money, towards assets, the treatment of ourselves to our own bodies and us within relationships, the parts we play within them and the benefits that we are granted through them. Definitely a time of deep transformation, of seeing the shadow, of shadow work. Not of, um, you know, uh, looking the other way, but looking deep, deep inside and understanding what stands behind the craving, what makes it stem, as I've said before and will say again in this video. So, definitely a time to look into your own abyss. Definitely a time to let go of the need to be perfect, but rather strive for better perfection. Strive to be a better version of yourself, nevertheless understanding that you are faulted by being here. Perfection is not of this world, is not of this dimension, just something we strive for. And by understanding ourselves better, by allowing changes to actually take part in our life instead of inhibiting them, we could actually rise again like the phoenix, stronger and brighter than ever. At the end of the month, as I come to the 27th of October, Mercury is going to try in Mars exactly and square Pluto again. A time that we can have epiphanies, understand better the, and, and, and move faster through the actions that progress us in society. Um, all this time from the 22nd up to the 27th, all through the end of the month is a great time to sign deals, to um, think forward and plan forward and to strategically build your life. I want to remind you that there's readings with me, private courses and lessons through Zoom and you could contact me. Everything is at the video, at the, at the slide at the end of the video. I want to thank you for hearing this and sharing this message. I want to thank you for commenting on it. And I want to thank you for sharing your light with the people in your life, for staying positive and you know, for making this a better world because it's not going to become one if we're not going to make it one and in order for us to make it one we need to become better ourselves so we are the heroes of this story don't forget that this is Nia Feiler and we live long and prosper Metakuya Oyasi